Hello, my name is Michael Avery from Cadence Design Systems. I'm going to describe how the if else properties work in system Verilog assertions. Just to caution you, however, although I'm going to tell you how it works, I would never use it for myself, and we'll find out the reasons why as we go along. So the syntax is very simple, it's much like if else in any other language other than what's in the branches here is actually a property expression. So here's a simple way of describing it. If some condition is true, so some expression A, then this is the first property expression, B implies C. This could be anything, this could be anything that is a property expression. Else, and then we give a different property expression. So depending on the truth of A, either this property has to hold B implies next cycle C, or D implies next cycle E. What you also have to bear in mind is this might be a property containing sequences. We've added hash hash 1j onto this. This is the same as the one above and hash hash 1k. Okay, so, so we'll see these behaviours, how that affects the behaviour as we go through. And because the whole thing, so if from here, from the if to this semicolon is a property expression. So that can go in any if or else branch. So we can nest these indefinitely if we wished. Now these properties are what I describe as WWY, you know, all that kind of stuff. And the reason for that is why would you ever want to do this? What problem does it ever solve? So do we really want to overcomplicate matters? We're trying to verify a, a design. If our design is complex, the verification is much more complex than that. And if we co complicate the verification, then we're not going to get very far. So the disadvantages are it complicates coverage analysis because you need to know which of the branches were executed. So you need to spend time doing that. If you assert that property and it fails, you need to spend time analysing which branches are failing. It could be all of them are failing. So you know, if all of them are failing, you've got to fix something and then go back and try again. And maybe you've got different branches failing next time. Informal, if the property is asserted and passes, you don't know all will pass without more effort and risk. So we have to take more care with coverage and assumptions and over-constraining and all these other things that you have to care about in formal. In formal, you do the exact opposite normally. In order to make things easier for the tool, to make the proof less complex and therefore take less time, you normally decompose problems, not try and spam them into a single property, which the if else allows you to do. And in any case, it doesn't do anything you couldn't do in a much less complicated way. So the example we saw, the first example, this if else property is equivalent to this, just A implies same cycle B. And if A and B happen to be booleans, we can just use an AND on the left hand side here. Okay. So those three sets of properties are equivalent. Although I've listed the disadvantages in all the time I've been using SVA, which was you know, since it started, or before it started, the draft versions of the language, I've never seen if else of any practical use anywhere ever. If else only was introduced in the 2009 LRM in any case. If you think it's a benefit describing in a single property, basically two properties, then if you think that's an advantage, then I'm afraid I'll disagree with you. So let's see now how these behave. So here we have an environment with these properties. These are the ones from the slides. Okay, so we're going to concentrate on this one first. The simplest form you can really have. Um, so if we go back and look at a waveform of that passing, so the good thing about Jasper is that it allows you to create what's called a related cover, which is a witness, i.e. an example of it passing. So you notice here, this is this is the assert. We notice the tool created for us, so these covers were created by the tool because it recognises that there are two ways of, you know, two branches of it passing in effect, and it's created two witness traces. So let's look at these. So this is what Jasper's good for, learning SVA. This shows me an example of this passing. Now, one good thing about Jasper is you have this button here, Quiet Trace. So what that will do, it will minimise the number of transactions required for the cover to complete. So now I'm seeing only only the signal. So so remember our property says if A is true, then B implies C. Okay, so we say to ourselves, yeah, that, that's what we'd expect from that kind of property. What we can also do with this is we can drag around waveforms and get the tool to show us, can I observe that waveform? So if I were to, for example, hold the waveform B down here, for two cycles. I've effectively added a constraint making B low for the first two cycles here. And I and then I say replot this. Notice the only way of doing that in the tool is by extending that trace because it can't do it in the first two cycles because I've said B is always zero. So it's moved all these things out by two cycles. So that's the, the expected behavior we get. And here we got the other cover here which was the if A is not true. So let's do a quiet trace again. And here we see if A is not true then D implies next cycle C as we'd expect. So if I were to use this wave edit again to make A true for two, two cycles there, again what I'd be expecting to happen is that the tool can only do that if it pushes out the, the cover by two more cycles in order to make A zero when it can. 
Let's look at the other property now. The property we've got is this one. So this has got a sequence in it. So what happens? You know, is A required to be true throughout this whole sequence completing? B, next cycle C, next cycle J. So we can use Jasper to tell us. We don't need to try and work it out from the language reference manual or anything like this. Um, let's look at the related covers for them. So next, the re related covers have the same name, but colon witness. So this is an example of it passing. So let's look at this waveform. And again, we'll use quiet trace to make sure we've only got transactions occurring which are needed in order to cause it to pass. So you notice AE is only true once here. So when A is true, the cycle A is true, we require, if B is true, we require C followed by J. So there's only one occurrence of A here. So if we made J zero in this cycle here, for example, the tool will then have to move this out one more cycle because J is required on that cycle. A being true, that's when the property evaluation starts. And even if A then goes to zero again, we still require the right hand side of that implication to occur. That's how it behaves. Okay, so now I've described how it behaves. I don't think you will ever find a practical use for this, but please email me if you do. I'll be glad to be proved wrong. Okay, so thanks for listening. Goodbye.